All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to install a Windows virtual machine on Synology NAS. So I'll start off this video by saying, what is a virtual machine? A virtual machine is basically just an operating system running within another operating system. And there's a ton of reasons why this can be really advantageous to you, especially if you're a business owner. First off are snapshots. Virtual Machine Manager allows you to take snapshots of a virtual machine. Basically, it's like having a copy of your entire computer, everything running and all, at a bunch of different times you can go back to. That means if somebody deletes a file or corrupts a program, you can just go back to the previous version and restore it instantly. Another really good reason is testing. You can basically test out an entire operating system all on another computer, and if you don't like it, just delete it. And if you break something by testing out what it can do, all you have to do is roll back the changes to the last snapshot you took. Another really common one is software licenses. Say you have a very expensive software program that everybody needs to use maybe once a week, but it's per computer it's installed on. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars installing it on everyone's computer, you can just install it on a virtual machine and then give everyone access to that virtual machine to log in. That way you're just installing one instance of the software on one computer and can save you a ton of money. Now these are just a few of the many, many, many reasons why virtualization, especially in a business sense, can really save a ton of money and headache. But let's get on to the Windows 10 install. So to do this, you're just gonna need three things. One, a Synology, obviously. Two, you're gonna need at least one storage pool formatted to BTRFS. Virtual Machine Manager, will not install virtual machines on EXT formatted drives. So you're gonna to have to use BTRFS. And finally, you're going to need a Windows 10 ISO file and license. And once you have those three things, you can go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is log into DSM on our Synology. So from here, you can see right here that I've already got Virtual Machine Manager installed. But if you don't, simply go into Package Center right here and scroll down to Virtual Machine Manager, which is right here, and just go ahead and install it. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so right here's the dashboard. It shows you how many hosts you have. If you had multiple Synologies and Synology's Pro VM license, you'd be able to run virtual machines on multiple Synologies. This gives you things like failover support, as well as migration easily. So you can go from running a virtual machine on one Synology and migrate it over to a different Synology. Then it also shows us how many virtual machines we've got and how many storage pools. The first thing you've got to do if you've not set it up already is go into storage. And we're going to go ahead and add one here. So just click add. And then we're going to go ahead and create a storage resource. So this will show you all the possible storage pools you've got on your Synology that are BTRFS formatted and are not currently used in Virtual Machine Manager. And I've got this one, and this volume three is actually just two SSDs in a RAID zero configuration, which really speeds up the performance with virtual machines. If you are gonna be running a lot of virtual machines, I would recommend either running them on an SSD pool or a pool that has SSD caching. I've got a tutorial on SSD caching here. So once we've selected it, just hit next. And here it'll tell you the name. So I'm gonna call it speed, because it's really fast. And we can even set it to notify us when it's very low on space. I would recommend putting this to 15%. All right, and it's just as simple as that. We've now created a new storage pool. Then if you've not set one up already, go into network and click add and you're gonna be creating a network for your virtual machines to use. This actually lets you do a ton of really cool things because if you wanted to, you could create a virtual machine network. Basically use one or two of the ports in your Synology and have them connected to their own network. This way, you can connect to it and manage it and it is essentially air-gapped. That means that you can mess around there and do horrible security things but because these virtual machines do not have access to the external network, they can't do anything. It's a great testing zone. But we're just gonna select both of them just because it's easier and just give it a name. Here, you can also select to have a VLAN ID. 
meaning you can create a separate network, but virtually, so you don't need the additional hardware. Then if you just want virtual machines to be able to communicate with themselves, you can actually create a private network where it just simulates an entire network all within the Synology. So you can have two virtual machines talking to each other without ever leaving whatever host they're running on. But we're just gonna do a regular external network here and go. All right, and so now we're gonna go into images and load in our ISO file. So to do that, we're gonna hit add and it's got an option here. You can either do it from your computer or from your Synology. So I'm gonna select my computer and go into where it's saved and it's gonna upload it here. An ISO file is basically the equivalent of an install disk. So just select next. And so I'm gonna save this on my main storage pool and it's gonna go ahead and create it. So first it's gotta go ahead and upload it and then it's gotta convert it to a usable image for the Synology. So while that's uploading, we're gonna go here and click Download Synology Guest Tools. This is basically an additional package you install when you're installing Windows, and it basically tells the operating system that it is being run on a virtual machine. That way, it doesn't have to do things like simulate network interfaces, and it can just work. It's really good for speeding up, and it also allows you to control the virtual machine from Virtual Machine Manager meaning you can safely power the machine down without doing the virtual equivalent of pulling the plug out of it. And you can even see the IP address. I would highly recommend doing this. So just click download. All right, and so now we can see right here, our Windows 10 ISO is built and our Synology guest tools are also downloaded. So that means we're ready to build our virtual machine. All right, and so now to actually build the virtual machine, we're going to go into virtual machine and select create. This is where you can set what operating system you're using. So let's go Microsoft Windows. And so now we get to choose which storage pool will be basically the internal hard drive of the operating system. So we're going to use that speed pool we created earlier because it's that really fast SSD pool. And now we're gonna go ahead and give it a name. And now we can set how many virtual CPU cores we're gonna give the virtual machine. For Windows, I would recommend giving it as many as you can muster. Another nice thing is if the virtual machine is not using all those cores, then it's not like they're completely non-usable. They still go back into the Synology DSM. We can also select some additional options here. And so these are your advanced options. It allows you to run the CPU in compatibility mode. This means you'll be able to migrate the virtual machine from one type of processor to another type of processor if you've got Synology VM Pro, all while it's running. For most people, you're probably not gonna be doing this, so I would recommend disabling it because it's just gonna add additional overhead. Then we are gonna want the Hyper-V entitlements because it helps optimize your virtual machine's processor. And now we've got some quality of service things. Basically it says, if you really want this virtual machine to have as much processor power as it needs, you'll give it a high. And if it's not that important and you want other virtual machines to take precedence, you can go low. It's all relative. Next up, we've got how much RAM you'd like to use. As we all know, Windows 10 likes its RAM. I would recommend giving this at least eight gigabytes. And note, this is not like the CPU cores. If you give it eight gigabytes of RAM, it is taking up eight gigabytes of RAM no matter if the machine is not using it because of the way virtual machines work. Finally, for the video card, I would recommend selecting VM VGA as that's what's gonna give you the best performance with Windows 10. All right, and now we get to select how big of a hard drive we would like to put in the virtual machine. Another nice thing about BTRFS is if I give it 100 gigabytes and Windows is only using 50 gigabytes of that, it's not gonna take up 100 gigabytes of my hard drive space on my Synology. It's only gonna take up 50 gigabytes. And finally, select whatever virtual network you'd like to use. And we are good to go. And now we're gonna go ahead and choose which ISO files to mount to the virtual computer that we're creating. So you're gonna need the Windows install. 
And this is where you choose the additional ISO file as being that Synology VMware guest tools that allows it to interact more efficiently with Synology. So auto start allows you to start up the virtual machine as soon as you boot up your Synology. And then your BIOS, we'll just choose legacy BIOS. It's the easiest thing to do. And finally down here with this virtual USB controller, we can actually take one of the real USB ports on our Synology and basically forward it to this virtual computer that we're creating. This way, anytime we plug in something into that, it'll just be forwarded directly into the virtual machine. But I'm not gonna set that up. And finally, we get to choose who's got access to it. And now verify everything's correct. And I like to say, power on the virtual machine after creation. All right, and as we can see after a minute, it's now running. So all we have to do is go and click connect. And it's basically going to create a virtual terminal for our computer to connect to. This is just like if we were to go down to an actual computer and plug in a VGA cable, this is what you would see, except it's all virtual. And so now Windows is going to take a while. So we're just going to wait for it to start up. All right. And so now it's finally entered the setup menu. And so now we're just going to go through the basic Windows install. And so now we've got the regular end user license agreements. And for this, we're going to do a very bare bones install. So custom windows install. And as we can see right here, we have this 100 gigabyte hard drive that we created virtually. So we're going to just select it and hit next. All right. And so now we're going to go ahead and kind of let windows do its thing. It's going to take a little while. So if we want to see some information about what it's doing, we can go into our DSM and go ahead and select the virtual machine. And there's this drop up menu right here that shows you some stats. So you can see what the host CPU is running, basically how much of my Synology's CPU is this virtual machine currently taking up. You can see the virtual disk, what it's doing and the network right here. And so now we're just going to sit back and relax and let windows install. All right, so after a series of rebooting and just Windows doing Windows thing, we're finally ready to start going. So you select your location and just kind of do all the regular Windows things. And as it's doing that, I'll point out this key right here, which allows you to send commands like Control, Alt, Delete, Escape, Tab, Alt, and Control, just in case your browser does not allow those passed through. And there's some additional settings here. So now we choose our keyboard layout, all pretty basic things. And so the first time you go through, it's going to not be able to figure out internet. So just click, I don't have internet. This is because it does not know how to interface with the network interface we've given it because we've not installed the Synology tools just yet. I'm going to go ahead and continue with limited setup which is what you need to do to set this up without internet the first time around. Then just add in your name, password, security questions, the regular Windows things. No, I do not want Cortana. And then this is all the stuff that Windows tries to take and steal your information on. And so I just say no to all that because, well, I like a little bit of privacy in my life or at least the illusion of it. And so now we've made it to part three of the, okay, Windows is installing and doing its thing. It's kind of annoying. I kind of wish they had just set up Windows install to you do everything up front. And then when you click start, it does the install as well as the user profiles and everything all in one go. That way, if you wanted to walk away for an hour, it would just be done by the time you got back, which would be nice. But here we are. Hey, and what do you know? We finally have Windows 10 installed, but there's still a couple of things we've got left to do. So we're going to go into documents or yes, files on Windows and go to this PC. And we're going to see right here that there is this CD hooked up 
that has a Synology VM tool. So this is that Synology guest package that allows Windows to know that it's running within a virtual machine. So we're gonna double click and hit the install. Did it open to? No, it did not. And we're just gonna go through the install. So now it's going through and basically allowing our Windows virtual machine and our Synology DSM that's running it to actually communicate in a much more efficient way. So this will decrease both network and CPU overhead and even give Synology Virtual Machine Manager some access into the Windows Virtual Machine. All right, and now all we have to do is restart. All right, and after waiting a minute and letting Windows figure itself out, we should have a working network connection. Though I have had to do this before, basically go into network, click on it, and scroll on down to change adapter options. And basically just go in and basically disable this network device, enable this network device, and that's fixed it for me before. It's a little bit finicky the very first time you boot up, but once you get it working, it'll work for the entire life of the virtual machine. All right, and so now everything should be working. Let's just test it out. We'll, we'll use Edge and we'll just go to a cool YouTube page. And looky right here, even YouTube's working. Wow, it's a great, great thing, great things going on here. All right, so now that we've got the network working, let's go back into DSM and see what we can do. All right, and so now that we've installed Synology Guest Tools, we can see right off the bat right here that Synology knows what the virtual machine's IP address is. So that way we know we can do this. We can just go and click shut down. And it's gonna go through and actually tell the virtual machine to do a shutdown. If we do not have Synology Guest Tools installed to shut it down, we would have to do a force to shut down which is the equivalent of just pulling the power cord out of your virtual machine, which is not the best thing to do. Well, that's all I've got for you. I hope everybody found this video interesting. Have a good one. Bye.